We did not get to heal in between these two chapters, so sadly, Sun is still at one health. Oh, I left her right on the edge. We're gonna go ahead and use our first cube to remove Curse. We're gonna heal two, bringing us back up to three, and we're gonna cleanse this cube right here on an ability I have never used. We're now gonna go ahead and I think we're gonna help out Colin. We're gonna join the fray. We're gonna grab those two shield tokens because shields are awesome, and we're gonna go move two and hit plus zero. Join the fray is going to activate, but it's going to be after we do our free move. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to make it there. So she's going to go ahead and move one, two, three, four, which is just fine. I'm not going to do the move part of it. I'm going to gain my two shields, and now let's see if we can hit him. I'm looking for a seven. I would get negative two being next to that darkness, but I do get plus two because I'm on a higher elevation. So let's go ahead and get this guy. I got a 13. We're on fire. That attack did three damage, bringing him down to seven, and we're gonna finish up my turn by doing my abundant steps. We're gonna do our little abundant steps. One, two, and I think, oh, should I move back one more? I think we're gonna be fine just right there. Next, we have our Shadow Cultist Veteran. He has a range of two, multi-shot two, curse one, moves four and attacks for five, has 10 health, the same amount of health as that Shadow Knight. The Shadow Cultist will move one, two, three, four, he has a range of two, one, two, so he can hit this area. That's exactly why Sun jumped out of the way. Perfect. Next, let's have the Shadow Knight rookie go. Oh, he's shield two, range two, strike one, and knockdown attacks for five, or if he's adjacent to that darkness, six. So the first thing he'll do is gain shield two. Currently, Sun's health is three, Maya's health is four. So that means this Shadow Knight's gonna go for Maya. All he's gonna have to do is take one giant step here. He's still adjacent to this darkness. He's gonna hit Maya for a total of six damage because remember, his range is two, one, two. So he's gonna take that sword and swipe it and hit her. I'm going to do a reaction to that Shadow Knight who attacked me. I am going to use my hide armor here. That will prevent four damage. I'm still gonna take two of them. So I'm gonna go from four health down to two health. Now, normally I would get a knockdown token, but I have a move two. So that move two will mean I will just simply remove the knockdown token. Next to go will be the Rookie Ravager. The Rookie Ravager has four movement, one, two, three, four, and that's all he can do. Maya will go next. She'll use her free move to move just there. She's within range one. Let's go ahead and do a twin strike. This will be a plus one, plus one hit thanks to our precision. So we need a seven or higher to hit. I'm hoping for a 16 or higher because I can put out a pet and I can potentially give him burn two. Our first roll will be a 10. That'll be three damage. Our second one, which by the way, he's got two shields. So that's just going to knock him down to six health. Our second attack, we get a 10 again. Great, but we weren't able to burn him, so he'll go down to three health. For my second cube action, I'm going to do remove curse. So that's gonna allow me to heal two. I'll go up to four health, and I'm gonna remove the one curse cube I have. Before Sun takes her activation, there is something I have to change. When you put your cubes down, the cube you're placing is the action you're doing. I don't have a ranged action I can use for my join the fray, so we're gonna reverse these. I'm gonna use my range action to do the heal one, and then I'll use my melee action to go ahead and do that join the fray. Sun has two cubes left. She's got a wisdom and agility cube. So we're first gonna go ahead and use our wisdom cube, which is gonna be a self heal two and focus one. So we're gonna go to five health and give a focus token. The next thing she's gonna do is, why not? We're just gonna relaxingly walk around. I'm gonna gain another focus token and I'm going to be able to move four spaces. Having placed that cube, I'm gonna go ahead and do a recall on all of these cubes and I'm gonna have to place a curse cube down here as well. And we're gonna put that right here in our focus or force strike because we've never used it. I have to draw a ruin out of the bag and we have drawn the green ruins. So we're gonna go up head and place that on in the initiative track. Oh wow, look at this. We got something from Space Invaders coming at us. We've placed our darkness tile out on the map and I'm gonna go and use my two shields to prevent the damage that I'm gonna take for standing in it because that's fantastic. The only thing I have left to do is we're gonna use our two focus tokens to go and make an attack using our body strike. We've seen this, plus three hit, plus three damage, and push three. But guess who's not getting pushed? Him, because he's too big. We get a net total of plus one for this roll. Let's hopefully take this guy up. Wow, my threes come back to bite me again. 
Well, unfortunately, we're not having a great time with the dice today. Uh, the Shadow Cultist is going to go next. All he has to do is move two, go into the darkness. He now has range one, two, and one, two to hit both of us. He multi-shots. He attacks for five damage. Oh, wait, it's actually six because he's in darkness. For six damage, I would get killed. I'm at four health. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my green cube here for evasion. Self fatigue one. Now I don't have any cubes here, but you immediately when you place your last cube, pick them all back up. And so I'm going to have to fatigue one of them once I do my re recall, but I want to read this quick. I'm going to fatigue one and prevent all but one damage. So I'm going to go down to three health. That means I'm going to have to take all of these cubes back and I'm going to have to uh, exhaust one. So I'm going to exhaust this one. And I'm also going to have to grab a curse cube. I'll put that onto my whistle blow as usual. That also means I have to draw one of these wonderful beauties. We've got another green one. It'll look like this. That's going to deal me two damage. So I'm going to go down to one health. Why not? <laughs> And then don't forget the shadow cultist will curse us. So that means I have to place a curse cube uh, as well here on the bear trap. Now with the curse cube, every time we place a curse cube, we're supposed to place out darkness, but we're now both going to be in darkness spaces. So we don't have to place out any darkness, but we still have to draw a rune tile. So we have a red one. We'll place that darkness tile right here. That is just glorious. It's time to do some backflip action. I'm gonna go ahead and prevent four self and I'm gonna jump three. Of course, I'm still gonna take two, bring my health total down to three and I have to gain another curse cube. We're gonna put that curse cube, oh, where do we put it? We're gonna put it on low kick. I haven't used that in a long time either, which means now I have to draw another rune. We've got a gray one, kind of looks like a office building somewhere. Next to go is that Shadow Knight that should be dead, but unfortunately, Sun just couldn't seem to hit him. I mean, it's not like he's not big enough. I don't know how she missed, but it is what it is. First thing he'll do is gain two shields. Then he's going to attack Sun because Sun has three health and Maya has a whopping one and deal her six damage. Sun's done everything she's could except hit the bad guy. So this time she's gonna do it for free. She's gonna do what John Bon Jovi taught her. She's gonna go out in a blaze of glory. She's gonna use this ability, diamond body, key one, retaliate two. At least she can take off those two shields that guy had before she goes down. Diamond Body does give us a key token. I'm gonna to place down on my character sheet, but now I have been knocked out. So I'm gonna go ahead and tip my miniature over. She'll stand up at the beginning of my turn, but she's not gonna be a targeted for anything at this point. The Ravager is next to go, and with Sun down, he's eyeing Maya like a big piece of meat. Oh, I'm hungry. One, two, three, four. Yeah, he's adjacent, standing in the darkness, attacking for four on Maya. I'll have to use one of my range cubes for this, but I am going to tumble. I'm going to prevent all four damage and get them free a move too. Maya will go ahead and tumble. Whoa, tumble. One, two, right there. Now it's Maya's turn. She is going to have to go out in a blaze of glory. She's going to start with a precise shot, getting plus two to her hit, attacking that shadow knight. Now she's at a minus two because she's adjacent to darkness, but that plus two and minus two cancel each other out. She still has precision, which gives her plus one. So we only need a seven to hit him and that will take him out. It'll deal him four damage. And we crit on a 16 or higher. Looking for a seven or higher. And we, oh my gosh, rolled an eight just enough. That Shadow Knight is no more. For my second cube action, let's do some rapid shots. We're going to get plus zero, plus zero. We're next to the darkness. So we're getting minus two, but I'm going to attack the Shadow Cultist and I am at a higher elevation. So I get a plus two. So those cancel out. So I still need just the regular seven or higher to hit him. Let's hit him twice. That'll be six out of his 10 damage if we can do it. Our first roll, we get a 15, one away from our 16. That still will be three damage. He's down from 10 to seven. Let's get our second roll here. We have a one, which is an absolute failure. With rolling that critical failure, we're gonna have to fatigue. Now, normally I'd like to keep this one so I could keep my evasion, but here's the deal. If I take one damage, I die anyways. This will allow me to focus and cleanse. So I think I'm just going to exhaust uh, my green agility cube. Like the ray of the sun, she is back from the dead. She's gonna gain a 13 health because that's her starting health. I get to do a free recall on all my cubes, but I have to place one of these purple cubes, which represent the trauma I took from falling over. And I have to place this in one of my slots and I will not be able to get rid of this for the rest of the adventure. I think we're gonna place it down 
in remove curse. So no longer can I heal two and cleanse one, but that's okay. I've got some other ways of healing and I've got ways of cleansing. Sun's gonna start by joining the fray. She's gonna grab her two shields, move and attack. Like a ray of hope, faster than a ray of light, the shining sun comes back to life. She's going to use her free move first. She's gonna move one, two, three, four into the darkness. I will have to take two damage, but I do have my two shields. We're gonna use that to block that damage. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and start my join the fray by moving up here and attacking our cultists. Our plus for our elevation and our negative for our darkness are gonna cancel each other out. Can we do it? I think the shining sun can. Come on, seven plus. Oh, I got the seven just barely. She did it. We were able to do three damage with that attack, bringing our cultist down to four health. Oh, it's not over yet. I've got some more fun in store for him. We're going to use our melee cube to use our iron fist. I don't get any additional to, re to the hit, but I do get a reroll, and this does plus one damage, so this could take out the cultist. Come on, let's do it up. I got a 15. That's enough. That's four damage. Our cultist is dead. Bomb, 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 bomb. The Ravenger is next to go. Now, technically, Maya is closer, but remember, they always go towards the strongest hero if they can hit them, and he can hit Sun, so he's going to take four giant steps, one, two, three, four, and attack Sun for a total of four damage. A monk never rests on her heels. She's going to backflip out of the way, which will prevent all the damage, and I still get to move three spaces, and plus one for the jelly boots. Our backflip is going to put us right over here, and yes, I counted out one, two, three, four, but it just looks way cooler if you do it in one motion. It's now Maya's turn. She is going to have a fun turn. She's going to heal two and cleanse one. One, two, and cleanse this one to then immediately recall all of her cubes because she has used all six of them. And then by doing that, she'll immediately have to take a curse cube, which we'll put right back onto that bear trap. Hey, that's where we just had it. We have drawn our rune. We're going to have to place a darkness that looks just like this. And you know what that means? We're placing it in our space. Uh, so I am going to use my blue cube here and place it with my hide armor to prevent four damage. And I get a free move too if I would like. Ooh, I'll have to see if I want to do that. But the big thing is, is I now have a total of three health. Gosh, I feel awesome. We've placed our darkness right here underneath Maya. Maya gets that free move too. Let's go ahead and have her move here. Then I think we'll just use one of our red cubes here. We're going to do our precise shot on this guy. So we get plus two to our hit. We're also going to get plus two because we're attacking at elevation, but minus two because of the darkness. So we get a total plus three thanks to our precision. And of course we crit on a 16. Looking for a five or higher and we rolled a five. <laughs> Wow, you guys, today is the day of terrible rolling, but we at least were able to take him out. Before Sun places down any cubes under her action board, she's going to interact with that token using a minor action. Doing so will flip this token down to a 1, meaning we can do this again on another time if we want to. But of course, you can only do this once per turn. We see a body of a captain next to a wheel. This could be Lucanor. Let's go ahead and take a look what we see here. We could examine the Torrin clothes. We could examine the Admiral's eyes. Oh, they're kind of green and ghostly. We could also turn the wheel. Oh, it could be like Wheel of Fortune. Go for it, Pat Sajak. Pay respects to the Admiral. We could remove the dagger or also pick up the handle fragment. Oh, that handle fragment is calling my name. When you touch Lucanor's hand, which is holding a piece of the helm shaped like a serpent's head, you feel that an unnatural strength was applied to pull it off. The corpse's rigidity also seems to keep holding the handle with the same strength. With much effort, you remove the piece of the helm from the Admiral's hands. As you look at the man again, you see him sit up and open his eyelids, showing his empty sockets. Lucanor's mouth opens wide, and an indescribable sound fills your mind with unspeakable visions and the horrors of summoning up the last moments of Lucanor's life. Wow, that was a great choice, Barent. Each hero takes two non-preventable damage. That'll put me down to one, and Sun will move down to 11. I'm doing okay at 11. We're going to go ahead and start placing our cubes. First, we're going to battle focus. That's going to give me a focus token. Then we also get to cleanse our cube off of low kick. Next, we're going to place our blue cube in balance finding, which allows us to self-heal two and focus one. So we're going to flip our token to a two, and we're going to go from 11 to 13 health. Oh, it's a good thing I got hit. Colin, how'd that two damage do to you? Thanks to Baron's wonderful choices, I now only have one health remaining. So what I'm going to do is use this uh, remove a curse and I'm going to heal two, so back up to three, and I'm going to cleanse by removing this bear trap. 
Then I'm going to use my battle focus. I'm going to focus one and cleanse one, which means on my whistle blow, that's now open and available. I have no curse cubes and I have one focus token. I will use my free move for three, one, two, three, but you know what that means. I went back down to one health because that uh, was two damage walking into the darkness. Thanks, Parent. We're going to start our turn by using a minor action to go ahead and take a look at that book again and pick something else. Hmm, there are a lot of really interesting things to do, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to pay our respects. After all, he is not doing too good. You pick up the Admiral's hat and broken sword, placing them on Lucanor's chest. You cross the man's hands, leaving him in a more dignified position. You say a prayer, and as you utter it, you notice that the darkness leaking out of the Admiral's eyes is reduced, while a small sunbeam penetrates the clouds and covers you both in a brief touch of heat. Each hero is going to gain two shields. Oh, that's awesome. Check it out. Sun brought a sunbeam. Our first action is going to put an agility cube on relaxing walk. Then we're going to have to do an unwilling recall. So we're going to grab all of our cubes. And oh, we can't take the purple one. <laughs> I really like to take the purple one though. And we're going to place a curse cube down in low kick. Now we're going to go ahead and grab a rune. We found a red rune. All right, let's see what the side is. Oh, it looks like an, it's another one of these space invader type dudes. Now from where we are, we can't place this down. So we're just going to place out three separate tiles. We're also going to take two damage. Damage. We're standing in the darkness, so oh, there goes our two shields we just got. Oh, barf. This is the tile we're supposed to place onto the board. Well, I've played enough Tetris to know that <laughs> it's not going to fit. So instead, you're going to go ahead and grab three singleton tiles, place it under the character, and then move them towards the closest character, which is Maya. Next, we're going to go ahead and do a relaxing walk. One, two, three. We're going to open this door. Knock, knock, monsters. Here I come. We've found the cannon room. When you pry open a hatch to the lower deck, you are struck by the acrid odor of rot and death. As you descend the steps, you realize that the rift in the ship's hull extends even further below. Your eyes struggle to adjust to the dimness and you become aware of a vile black ooze flowing outward from that hole and gathering along the walls and corners. You feel drawn toward it and it seems to gaze back at you, probing your mind for nightmares and giving them shape. <laughs> now I am going to tell you, we were going to play on the hard difficulty and use the uh, QR code. Uh, we're having a hard enough time as it is, so we're just going to play normal mode. So you can see here we're going to have a Shadow Cultist Rookie, a Lady Claw Rookie, two Treasure Tokens, an Event Token, and then a Shadow Cultist as well. Uh, we have a special rule, Nightmares. When you finish the setup for this room, the hero who opened the door, which would be Sun, must make a Wisdom check of 14. It'll be a 12 for her because she has one Wisdom cube. If she succeeds, nothing special happens and you can keep playing normally. If she fails, we're going to spawn one black monster rookie in that space. Also, when the last monster is defeated, we'll read a broken floor on page 12. 12 or higher. Can we do it? Let's see. Yes, we got a 14. No black mini. We have our board all set up. We have our two lady claws and our shadow cultists ready to go. We weren't clear because the picture showed a Lady Claw and the text said Shadow Cultist. Now this scenario has to do more with the Lady Claws, so that's why we decided to use one of them. I still have one more movement point, so I'm going to step in the room. That's right. I'm not worried about these guys. Now I'm going to use my free move. So I'm going to move one, two, three to right there. That's right. Look where I am. I'm all set to do some major damage to these guys. We're going to bring the pain by starting off doing Whirlwind Strike. I'm going to spend all three of my stamina tokens, and this attack will give cleave two, plus one to hit, and plus two to damage, trying to bring that pain. With our Whirlwind Strike, we are hitting both the Blue Lady Claw and the Shadow Cultist. We're looking for a 7+. plus. Yes, we got a 10. That's enough to do 5 damage to each of these characters. They all have 6, so it's going to bring them down to 1 damage. I'm going to use our key token to hit our Shadow Cultist. Let's try to take them all out. I need to just do a normal hit. Yes, we got him. That's going to do 3 damage, which is going to be enough to take him out. Next, we're going to use Join the Fray to try to hit our final enemy, that blue Lady Claw. Let's roll it up and see if we hit... Yes, we got him again. That's totally going to take them out. That's two people that we were able to take out. We're going to gain our shield two token from Join the Fray. I also get to move because of that as well. So we're going to move next to this chest and draw a treasure card. We're going to give it a good old truffle shuffle and take the card right here on top. We got a scroll of resurrection. It says discard to self remove one trauma cube from your board. Oh, that's amazing. We have a trauma cube. This could come in handy. Now we have to see if that trapped was chest will roll. Oh, it's not trapped. That's fantastic. 
The Lady Claw will activate next. Now, we did say that the Lady Claw only had six out. They actually had eight, but fortunately, Sun still took care of that one. So we only have one green one left. Let's activate it. The Lady Claw can cleave too, but we're not in an area where she can get adjacent to both of us. So instead, she's just going to come right here and attack Sun for a total of four damage. We first have to apply our two shields, which is fine. Then I'm gonna take the two damage. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that at all. The problem is I'm gonna get knocked down, but that's okay, I'll get up again. Maya is next to go. She'll move three, one, two, three for her free move action. She is within range one. Let's go ahead and attack. For our first cube action, why don't we do our coordinated strike? We'll attack with a plus one, plus one, and we get to activate one of our pets. We need a seven or higher to hit, and we get a 17. That means we get to place out one of our pets. Let's place out the eagle. We also get to either do a burn one or a slow one because of our magic crossbow. She's immune to burn, so let's go ahead and slow her one. We can also, because we have our ring of crimson viper, burn one or poison one. Let's go ahead and poison one for this one. So she's poison one and she's slowed. Let's now do our second roll, looking for a seven or higher. Oh, we got an eight. That's three more damage. She was at eight before, so we did a total of six damage. So she's down to two health. And you know what? Let's activate that eagle. My eagle then gets to activate. He'll move one space here, attack that Lady Claw for one damage. So it's down to one. And because there's an adjacent ally, AKA Sun, Sun is going to recover one of her cubes. She's gonna get her cube of uh, melee. So she has all of her cubes back. And then of course the eagle has flyby, but I think I'm just gonna leave the eagle there because he's still adjacent to me. That was a good turn. I almost forgot I've only done one cube action. So my second cube action, I'm simply going to move. I'm going to get three movement. Now that does mean all of my cubes are going to come back, which means I'm going to have to draw a rune token. I have this orange one. It's going to look like this. Oh man, I hate these ones. Uh, and I'm going to take two damage, but I have two shields. So I'll remove the two shield from the board. I've placed the darkness tile down and unfortunately my eagle is sitting right in it. My eagle takes at least one point of damage. It's removed from the board. Gosh, those pets. Easy come, easy go. <laughs> I do also get a curse cube. I forgot to show you that. I'm going to place that in my whistleblow spot, but I am going to get that free movement of two. Now I've already taken damage for the darkness, so I can move one, two to move here. Oh, you know what? I'm going to move here for my third one. So I'm not engaged with an enemy. Do I want to pick up that chest? I am at one health. Yes, I want to pick up that chest. And you know what I find? The potion of mana. This is so much cooler than what Baron found. No, I'm just kidding. Baron found something awesome. I have discard to self recall all your AC. Now we have to see if this chest is trapped. Oh no, it definitely is. I'm going to get poisoned too. You know what that means? I am very likely going to die. We're going to start by doing a move action, which is going to remove our knockdown token. Next, we're going to take our wisdom cube and place it in balance finding. This will allow us to self heal two back to 13, and it's going to give us a focus token. I'm really just preparing for the next turn, more or less. We're going to use our range cube to go ahead and grab another focus token, and I'm going to cleanse our curse cube off of low kick. That's really all we're going to do with sun for this turn, and it's totally fine because the poison is going to sadly dispose of the lady claw or should i say happily badly weakened by whatever terrors befell the ship and the stresses of the current fighting the half rotted wooden planks beneath your feet give way and you feel yourself tumble into the darkening abyss you land in the deepest hold of the ship your fall softened by the deep salt water that has flooded it through the rift that has nearly split the ship in two Darkness lurks in every corner of the room, and the center of the hold is dominated by a black ivory statue of an insane summoner. From the statue's mouth, a tendril of smoke like darkness drifts upward, spreading through the ship. Well, this looks fun. We've got a veteran cultist, we've got a rookie Lady Claw, one interaction, and another Lady Craw Claw that's a rookie. Look at where we have fallen. We are now in here with two Lady Claws and a Shadow Cultist. It is now my activation. Let's see how I'm going to deal with this poison. At the beginning of your turn, you have to resolve all the conditions you have. I only have one health and I have two poison. That should kill me. Aha, should, but it won't. I'm going to use my Wisdom Cube here. You can do reactions. I'm going to self-prevent four damage. Yeah, it seems a little overkill, but I'm at least preventing the two damage from this and I get a free move too. 
I'll take that free move and move one, two right here. Now, since I'm next to that interaction token, but I'm not next to an enemy, I'm going to do that minor action, interact with it one time, and flip it over to the one side. Well, I wasn't prepared for such a scary looking picture, but this looks awesome and scary. <laughs> I can either pick up the stone shard, examine the book, pick up the staff, pick up the tiara, examine the mouth of the statue, or remove the pendant. Uh, you know, Barrett and I talked, and I think, let's try t checking out the staff. So let's, let's see what happens if we pick that up. You hold the staff in your hands, and almost instantly, a small dimensional rift opens. You see several items in a strange room while the portal slowly closes. You quickly shove your hand into the portal and try to retrieve some of the items. Reveal the top three cards of the treasure deck. You may choose one of them to keep, then shuffle the remaining cards back into the treasure deck. Huh, not bad. My three treasure cards are a potion of healing, a potion of focus, and a potion of levitation. All look awesome, but with one health and two poison, I think I'm going to get the potion of healing. And then as a minor action, I'm going to use that right now. Now, this doesn't heal my poison, but it will heal me one, two, three, four, up to five beautiful health. It feels so good. So then my first cube action, I am definitely going to focus one and cleanse one. By doing the cleanse one, I can remove the two poison and the cleanse one also removes this. I'm also going to get my second then focus token. My second cube action will be my coordinated strike. I'm going to attack twice against that shadow cultist. It has 10 health, so I'm hoping to hit it for at least six damage and I can get one of my pets out. I need a seven or higher to hit. Oh, I just got a seven. So that's gonna deal three damage to him, bringing him down to seven health. My second roll is a five, so that's definitely a miss. My coordinated strike allows me to place out my wolf and then I'm going to end my turn so my wolf gets to activate by moving right here. He's going to bite that shadow cultist, knocking him down to five health and giving him a, a bleed one token. Sun's going to start her activation. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to charge our dice because it hasn't been the greatest to us. And after seeing Colin's terrible roll, I'm hoping if we charge these dice, they might actually benefit us better. Then we're going to take our move action moving up to where they are. We'll show that on the board in a second. I also will just show you what I'm planning to do. Iron Fist is going to be my first attack. Low Kick is going to be my second attack. We're going to see how those go and see what we can do. Sun's movement's going to take her one out of my way two three right here and oh man we're gonna hit this guy first see how well we do against him by him i mean shadow cultist we're looking for a seven plus let's see if we get it we got a 14 oh charging that dice worked this attack is going to do four damage to that shadow cultist bringing him down to one at this point now i'm going to turn my attention to our lady club mainly because he has bleed so we're just going to take him out with a status effect oh we love these status effects we're going to attempt to knock this character down. I get plus three to hit and we'll do three damage if this actually succeeds. Oh, sadly it did not. Need to charge him more. Sun does get to use her abundant steps. One, two, three. Right there. Oh, she fell off the board. There you go. She's, she's still learning. She's a training monk. Next to go would be the Shadow Cultist, but we all know he's going to die because of his bleed one. Heck yeah, dog. Thank you, Fluffy. Then we'll move to the Lady Claws. So the Lady Claws will cleave two, knock down, they move four, and attack for four damage. The first one to activate will be the green one. Now, thanks to Barrett's amazing move, yeah, we can't roll dice worth beans today, but at least we're using some smarter tactics. So she'll move to here and try and attack Barrett. She cannot target me or my dog because we're too far away. This hit is actually going to do some damage to us. I'm just going to use my Absorb Prevent two on myself, bringing our health total down to 11. I am going to gain our knockdown token though as well. The next Lady Claw will also target Sun because Sun has 11 health and Maya only has five. We'll attack for four damage. To prevent the Lady Claw's attack, we're gonna backflip. We're gonna prevent four, so I'm not gonna take any damage. And then I get to jump three, but really all that's gonna do is remove our knockdown token, which is just fine. We now have to do a willing recall, so we're gonna go ahead, or unwilling recall, I apologize. We're gonna take all of our cubes back, just like that. We're also gonna have to go ahead and put a curse cube down. And I think we'll put the curse cube down right here and low kick, not the end of the world. We're probably gonna get rid of it pretty quick. I do have to draw a rune out of the bag, and we drew a blue rune. And let's see what it looks like. Oh, here's some more Tetris pieces. We're gonna put them out on the Board. But first, let's take the two damage because, of course, that is going to be landing in my space, that evil, evil darkness tile. I'm going to take this cube and put it in our cloth armor, preventing the two damage that way. 
we've placed that darkness tile out on the board. Looks pretty terrible if you ask me. Uh, it is going to be Maya's turn next. The first thing she's going to do, I was going to leave this for Berndt, but he is a little bit busy with two Lady Claws. So I think I'll do the minor action here and check out this first. So what I did is I asked Baron what he would take a look at here, and he said, oh, I think I'm going to look at the stone shard if I was doing this. So I immediately decided to pick checking out the book, because we have seen Baron's luck. It has not been great. So let's check out that book. You hold the ancient book in your hands. Inside, the handwriting is fancy and blurred. You notice that a page has been ripped out. Of course, they always do. Of the other pages, stained with blood, only one seems to be readable. When you read it, you feel your body fill up with refreshing and illuminating energy. You feel lighter. Each hero receives cleanse one. Well, that's awesome. I don't need one, but we do know Sun over there definitely needs it. So Sun is going to remove one from the low kick. What do you say we shoot these gals four times, huh? We'll do our rapid shots, each with a plus one, plus one, and a twin strike, plus one, plus one. Shooting at the blue lady claw, we have a 20. That is a times two. We're dealing three damage. That's six damage to her. She's down to two health. That's the first shot. Because I rolled a 16 or higher, I can activate one of my pets. My dog, Fluffy, one, two, three, comes right to here, bites that blue lady claw for two damage. She's off the board. That's her eight health done. We still have three attacks left. Let's attack that green lady claw. Second attack, seven or higher is what we need. Oh, we just missed. Okay. Third attack. Let's see what we get here. We get a nine, so we'll deal three damage. One, two, three, down to five. And our fourth attack on that green one is a 14, so that's three more. One, two, three, down to two health. That's perfect. My dog is going to do the rest. I still haven't done my free move action, so I'm going to move one, two, interrupt my movement. Let's check out this room. A partially hidden stairway descends behind the boxes and barrels scattered across the floor, leading to what appears to be the Admiral's private stash. All the chests here have been caved in. Gold coins and other treasures litter the floor. Ooh, treasures! The only interact chest is a midnight black coffer with silver hasps and a gleaming green etching. Your eyes are drawn to its ebon surface, and you almost hear an inviting song in your ears. We don't want to open it. We know we don't want to open it. You desire to open it is your desire to open it is overwhelming. A cultist wrestles with the chest, turning and hissing when you enter. Oh man! Okay, we have we have another veteran cultist. We'll have a lady claw fighter, one interaction token, and a fighter uh, ravager. Oh, actually no, that's for three plus. So we're just gonna have two enemies in this room. When you open this door, if none of the heroes has the secret passage status written down on the campaign log, we don't, you take three damage and write down noise status on the campaign. Ow, I'm going to take three damage. That's going to put me down to two health because there's no way I can prevent that. I've got a cube there. So I'm down to two health. When the last enemy is defeated and there are no more interaction tokens on the board, oh, we have to interact then. Read special event back on the deck on page 13. We've placed our two enemies out on the board. I'm going to take one more step right here. That's going to end my activation, but my dog gets to go and take out a Lady Claw. Go get her, Fluffy. Rawr! Sons of little out of the battle, but that's okay. With those boots of agility, you watch and see how this transpires. Our free move is going to be four movement, and I can move through friendly. So one, two, three, four, over to there. Next, we're going to use an agility cube on our relaxing walk to take a stroll down memory lane. One, two, three, four. In the middle of Baron's turn, I need to remember I wanted to use my potion of mana. I'm going to discard this to recall all of my action cubes because I only had one cube left. This way, I will not have to do an unwilling recall. Woohoo! As Colin rudely interrupted me by making himself better, I'm going to go ahead and gain a focus token from our relaxing walk, bringing our focus token total to three. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to use one of our yellow cubes to go ahead and join the fray. We've seen this bad boy before. It's absolutely amazing. We're going to grab two shields, which is probably what I should have done last turn, moving three spaces, one, two, three, over to here. and. The cultist is on a level higher than me, which means I'm going to be taking two penalty hit to try to hit this thing. So it's going to be harder for me to do it. But I think we're going to try it because we're going to go for broke. We're looking for a nine or higher. And we got ourselves a one. Yes, that's perfect. Why do I keep rolling these ones, Colin? That critical failure isn't something that benefits the group very much, according to what I know about critical failures. I'm going to remove our ranged cube because we haven't really been using it too much except to battle focus. And by the time I'm going to do that, I'll probably be getting it back. 
I am, however, going to use our abundant steps after this pitiful attack, and I'm going to use my whirlwind strike once we do that. Our abundant steps is going to take us right up here. We're going to step up. Then I'll go ahead and cleave both of our enemies here, and I'll be getting plus two against that one. This die, again, is going to be decommissioned. It has failed me. I've had this one charging on a critical miss. Basically, the charging it on critical hits didn't work. So we're going to charge them on critical misses, and maybe that'll work better. Let's see how it goes. 16! That's perfect! That 16 is going to activate our Blood Rust Blade. It says whenever you get a 16 plus, the attack gains bleed one. And check it out. I've got two bleeding tokens, and I've got two people that want them. That cleave does five damage to each of those characters, bringing them both down to five. So I did about half their health and they're bleeding. That's really all Sun can do. She only managed to walk all the way across the board, critically fail, and then do a super attack. We'll now move to that poor Shadow Cultist. He's gonna take one damage to start his turn due to that bleed token. He's down to four health. Unfortunately, he has multi-shot two. This is not good. That means he's gonna try and target two of us and he has a range of two. That means all he needs to do is move one space here. He is now within range two of me, and he's within range two of Sun, and he's going to attack both of us for five damage, and if he deals any damage with that attack, he's going to give us a curse cube. Well, I've been living on the edge of death for this game. I'm going to use evasion here. It states that I can fatigue one, so I'm gonna fatigue this uh, blue cube, and then I will prevent all but one damage. So that puts me down to one health, but that does mean I gain a curse cube. I'll place that curse cube here, and when I get that curse cube, I have to draw a rune. I have a gray rune. That means, oh, I should show you the type of darkness Tetris tile I have. I'll have this, this one. Because of where I am, I'm just going to get the three individual darkness tiles. That's going to deal me two damage, which should kill me. But Maya's not that easy to kill. What she's going to do is use one of her range tokens. Oh, that stinks. But we're going to use that to prevent four, and we're actually going to move two on top of that. Our move two is going to allow us to move one, two, getting ourselves a little bit closer. Unfortunately, we are still adjacent to darkness. We're going to start by using our divert three. We're going to try to prevent as much of this as we can. That means I am going to take two, bringing my health down to nine. Oh, wait, I don't take anything. Check it out. I totally forgot I got shields. Oh, booyah. I don't take any damage from that attack. Our Lady Claw is next. She's going to take one damage because of the bleed, so she's also down to four. She is going to attack Sun, uh, doing, well, I can't do the cleave, but is going to knock her down for five damage. Somehow in my awesome brain, I decided to use my agility cube over here in the cloth armor. That was a brainiac move. The only one we have left is this one, and I could use it for retaliate too, but I think we're just going to prevent two damage. So we're going to take one, two, three, and that's right, I get knocked down. That is my final cube, so I have to do an unwilling recall, which means I get to recall all these fantastic cubes. I have to draw a rune token and also gain a curse cube. So we're gonna gain our curse cube, we're gonna throw it up here in low kick. I'm gonna grab our rune, we got a red one, and it looks like this. Oh, look at that, it's a do not entry symbol. We're gonna go ahead and do not enter two, two damage on ourselves. I'm gonna use, hmm, how about this agility cube over here? Eh, bad idea, we've already decided that was a poor move. We'll use this blue one, which probably means I'm going to need it later. I am at eight health. Maybe healing would be a good thing. I have two agility cubes. I'm going to go ahead and use the agility cube. Going to kick myself later. I'm hoping not to have to do a relaxing walk. Here's the darkness tile that Sun spawned. We'll move to Maya's turn. Maya's going to move one, two, three. She's still within range of both of these enemies. First thing I'll do is my coordinated strike, and I'll be able to activate my wolf to be able to get him a little bit closer to the battle. That Shadow Cultist is bad news, so we're going to go for him first. We'll roll that die up. That is a 16. That means he's down to one health. I can burn him for one. Actually, and I can burn him for one and poison him for one. He is not immune to either, so that means he's totally going to die, and I'll be able to activate my wolf. Let's take that dog for a run. One, two, three, four. Our second attack will then be on that Lady Claw. We get a 12 that will deal her three damage. She's down to one health. Because of our coordinated strike, our dog then gets to activate one, two, three, four. Oh, he's so close. I still have one cube action. Out of the two cubes I have remaining, I'm gonna use this one to heal two. That will put me back up to three glorious health and I will cleanse my uh, curse cube off. Then it is dog versus lady claw. And you know what? Dog's gonna move in, attack for two damage, and take that lady claw out. 
Sun's going to start by using her normal movement, which means we get to get rid of the knockdown token, which is awesome. So remember when I said, I probably wanted to use relaxing walk. Yep, we're using relaxing walk. We're going to move three and focus one. I'm also going to use balance finding, allowing myself to heal two and focus one. So I'm going to go back up to 10 health and I'm going to grab two focus tokens. Well, actually it's one focus token with a two on it. Our relaxing walk is going to bring us right over here next to our token so we can interact with that. Black chest. The wood the chest is made of is so densely black that it seems to suck the light around it. The corners are decorated with silver hasps and a thin pulsating dark green alloy outlines the flowing shapeless carvings around the whole piece. On the chest lock hasps, there is an inscription in an unknown language. As you look at it, you can hear indistinct whispers. So, let's see what it looks like. Here's the black chest. Oh, look at how many cool things we can do. We can examine the stone hand. We can perform a cleansing ritual, but that is the path of devotion only, and I am not that. We can force open the lock. We can read the inscriptions on the chest. I'm sure that's fantastic. Oh, hey, look, Colin, a scroll for you to read. We also have pick the lock, path of the cunning only. And I am path of cunning. Oh, Mung is totally going to pick this lock. We see that if we pick the lock, it says you insert your tools into the lock. Oh, it's got tools. That's cool. And they are almost instantly repelled by a cold wave that makes your whole body tingle. Oh, that's going to be fantastic. Oh, lucky us. We get to draw two tiles. But good news, they are not placed in the respective darkness tiles on the map, but we do have to place them on the initiative track. We got an orange one and a red one. I'm not going to show you the darkness tiles because we don't place them. The Shadow Cultist is next. He's going to die from the burns that we put on him due to our magic crossbow. Gosh, that was awesome. It is now Maya's turn. We're going to use our free movement of one, two, three. I then have to use my final cube to move three, which means I immediately will recall all of my cubes unwillingly. Grr. That means I'm going to grab this curse cube, put it back on my whistle blow, and I'm going to grab another rune tile. And oh, it's another small one, uh, but that's going to cause me to take two damage. So I will go down to one health because who doesn't like living on the edge? I've placed my darkness here. I will move up one and let's interact with this token. As we see, Barrett is pretty terrible at picking the best option on here. I'm actually quite good at it, so I am going to check out that scroll. Thank you very much, Barrett, and it's going to be something good. The handwriting on the scroll reminds you of one you've seen recently in an old ritual book in an unknown language, but this one seems oddly legible. As you read it, your mind is taken to the void between the planes where you can see darkness forming. The truth is maddening. Uh, remember how I said it was going to be good? Yeah, no, instead, I'm going to take two non-preventable damage, and I'm going to die. Maya may have been killed looking at that scroll, but with that, we are immediately going to move to the next room. The small door makes a shrill creak as you push it open, revealing a narrow, improvised balcony, likely used to access the back of the ship when repairs are needed. Half-decayed rope ladders stretch upward, leading to the deck. Reluctantly, you clamber up the best-looking one, praying that it can still hold your weight. You come over the gunwale and look toward the helm. To your astonishment, Admiral Lucanor now stands there, glaring balefully at you. He screams in an inhuman voice, and more sea-tainted creatures erupt from the bowels of the Sea Wing's corpse. Move all heroes to the start position on APL E2F of the ship, add all monsters, and begin the encounter. If any hero has the noise status on the campaign log, erase it, and Admiral Lucanor will have a second activation immediately after his first. Bummer. When the last enemy is defeated, read the end of the adventure. Here we are back on the ship. You can see that the captain is way over here. We're going to be way over here. So maybe he won't be able to get to us. We'll see. We'll also have a shadow cultist veteran and a lady claw veteran to deal with. Maya, unfortunately, is dead on the deck here. We'll move to Sun's turn. Sun's going to try to be really tricky sneaky. She's going to start by using join the fray. Then our next action cube is going to be Iron Fist. Let's go to the board and check it out. Sun's going to move one, two, three with our Join the Fray, gain our two shield tokens, and attack. We need a seven plus to hit. We got 11, so that's going to do three damage to her. Then we're going to move into our Iron Fist. I need a seven plus for this roll as well, and we got a five, so we missed, but that's okay. I get a reroll with our Iron Fist. Come on, 20. Oh, we got a 10. That's half a 20, and it's still a hit, so we'll take three more damage. 
Oh, I forgot. Iron Fist gives plus one damage, so she's actually at five health. At this point, I think it's time to go for the kill shot. We're going to use our body strike. I'm going to spend both my focus tokens to get plus three to this roll and do six damage. A little bit overkill, but none doesn't really hurt. I got four, five, six, seven. That is still enough to take out our creature. We did forget to show you guys her card. You can see here she would have cleaved all, knocked down, poison one, and she had that 12 health. But Sun didn't want her to activate. After Sun destroyed that Lady Claw, she's going to move back one, two, three with her abundant steps. And at this point, she's going to use her free move to move right there, hiding behind Maya, who's on the ground. Here we have Commander Lucanor's card. On the left side, you can see he's immune to poison, bleed, knockdown, stun. He is using the Ravager's card for his initiatives. That's why he's going next. He has 20 health. He will cleave all, intimidate one plus X. Now, what does that X stand for? I had to ask because I missed this in the rules. All the commanders, whenever they have an X, they have a rune that's tied to them. He has the gray rune that's tied to him. So we have drawn one, two, three of them. So he will intimidate for four and push for four whenever he attacks. Yes, and he's going to get an extra activation because apparently I was noisy. I'm so sorry, Bert. He moves a total of five. He attacks for four. It is melee, and he does have that 20 health. So that's what we need to clear out, plus that Shadow Cultist to win the game. Commander Lucanor will move five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. And then with his second activation, he'll move five. One, two, three, four, five. Look at that. Berndt, the Sun Master, avoided his attack even with two activations. And now he's nice and close to us. That actually worked out almost to our favor. From what I understand in the rules, that is only going to happen the first time because we were noisy. After that, his activations will be once per turn. Now our Shadow Cultist is going to go. We know what he does. He's got the range of two multi-shot, but I'm down. So he's just looking to hit Sun, getting in range of two, which means all he has to do is move here. He's going to attack for six damage. Remember when I said, hey, I'll just put this agility cube over here. I probably won't need it. Guess what? I need it, and I don't even have it. We're going to have to use a divert three, which is going to help us a little bit. We're going to prevent three plus our shield token, which is five. I'm still going to take one damage, bringing myself down to nine. He's going to be making me place a curse cube. I think we're going to put our curse cube right. Oh, actually, no, I've got to do an unwilling recall first. I'm out of cubes. Oh, this is going to be not good. We're going to take all these out and put them back on our board. I have to place this out somewhere. I think I'll put one on balance finding. Now I have to place Curse Cube because he makes me place a Curse Cube. Oh, yuck, this guy's terrible. Where am I going to put it? There's no place I want to use all these things. We're going to put on Relaxing Walk. I'm done using that because every time I use it, I don't get to use my backflip. We're going to draw a couple runes because I had to put a couple Curse Cubes out there. Our first rune we drew is this blue one. And let's see what it is. Oh, it's just a straight old guy here. We're just placing him out on the board. That's fantastic. And that, of course, is going to be right on top of me. So we're going to go ahead and use our agility. Ah, oh, fooled you. We're going to put our wisdom cube over here and prevent two. Next, we're going to go ahead and draw our next ruin. It is a green one. It looks like this, but we're not going to place it because Colin's technically not on the board right now, and I'm already standing in darkness. I have amassed four cubes, and remember, if we ever get to six, we're going to lose the game. So let's not get there. At the beginning of Maya's turn, she's going to heal up to 11 health. She's going to place a trauma cube in her bear trap space. She will stand back up on the board. We're going to do our free move, which I'll show you in a second. And then we're going to do our coordinated attack and we'll do our rapid shots. Maya's going to move just one space, actually maybe two, actually maybe three. <laughs> we don't want to be next to each other, so I'm trying to make sure I give enough room for Sun to move around because he cleaves all. We do not want to be adjacent to each other. So at where I'm at, I'm going to attack first this Shadow Cultist. I'm in range of one of both of them. Our first attack, we're looking for a seven. We've got it. So we just dealt three damage to that Shadow Cultist, bringing him down to seven health. We'll roll up for the second attack. That's an eight. That's three more damage. He's down to four. Then with my coordinated strike, I'm going to place my dog out on the board. And now for my next two hits, I'm going to go for the boss who's at 20 health. Okay, let's see what we can do. Our first attack is an 11. That will deal him three damage. He's down to 17. Our next one we get a six, which is just a miss. Bummer. So we missed on that one. However, I now can use my two focus and I can attack three times using eeny, meeny, miny, mo, needing seven plus. Going for the boss. First one, critical failure. We'll have to exhaust a cube. I'm going to exhaust this one. Bummer. We still get two more hits though. 
Come on, second roll. Be better than that. We got a nine. Okay, we hit him for three. One, two, three. He's down to 14. I was really hoping that I could activate my dog one more time. We've got a four. Nope, so a total miss. Since both Barrett and I can't seem to hit the broad side of a barn, my dog certainly can. He's going to move one space, attack for two damage, knocking the boss down to 12 health, which is great. He would normally bleed, but remember, he's immune to bleed, so nothing's going to happen there. Now it's Sun's turn. Sun's going to start by using her move. She's going to move one, two, right past here. Just wave to him passing by. Three, four over here. We're going to try to take out this cultist. We're going to place our cube in Iron Fist and see how it goes. I need plus one damage. I need plus one everything here. I got a 12. That's enough. So we did four damage to the cultist, which is enough to take the cultist off the board. And we're going to move into our next action. For my second action, I'm going to use Join the Fray, charge my die up a little bit, gain two shield tokens. We're going to move adjacent to the commander. Let's roll our die. We got a 13, that's enough to do another three damage. Doom, he's down to nine. The commander is next. He's going to turn and set his eyes on Maya because Maya has 11 health and Sun only has nine. He's going to move one step right here. He's going to cleave all. So he's going to deal damage to both the dog, dog's done, and to Maya. Maya's going to take a total of four damage. She is then going to get pushed for four and she's going to take four Intimidation Tokens. Look at that token, you guys. Probably the best token I've ever seen. Uh, intimidation Tokens. So I'm going to have four of these, not just one. I'm going to have four. Uh, what they do is the next time I attack, I have to reduce my damage by the amount of Intimidation Tokens I have. So my first attack is going to do nothing next time. Then I'll discard them. Remember how I said I was going to take that Intimidate? No, I'm not, because you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tumble. I'm going to prevent four damage, and I get a free move of two. I'll move myself one, two. I'm just farther away from him. I'm still going to want to get to at least this spot before I attack because I'm still adjacent to darkness, which would give me a minus two for my hit. After Maya tumbles away from the commander, she's then going to do a precise shot. She's going to gear up, get a plus two to her hit. Actually, it's a plus three, plus one damage, and I crit on a 16 or higher. I need a five or higher to hit. Oh, that is a nine. That should be good. That will deal him four damage bringing him down to five health. And I'm realizing I was adjacent to darkness, so I had a minus two on that hit, but that's okay. That actually would have worked still with the nine roll, so we'll take it. I only have one cube left, so I am going to use this for the suppression shots. That's going to let me move three. We're going to target up to two different enemies, deal one damage. We're just going to deal one damage to the boss. He's now down to four. I am then going to grab from the bag of doom and I get an orange one. We've got a straight line for darkness. Gosh, darn. That will deal me two damage. I'll go down to nine health. I will do my unwilling recall and I need to place a cube. Let's go ahead and place this cube into the bear trap spot. And of course I can't place that in the bear trap spot. <laughs> That's where my trauma cube is. I will instead place this boy, you know, I've got all these different ways to attack. Let's do the mortal blow. Sun's going to start her turn by battle focus. I'm running out of options due to all these curse cubes. We're going to remove the one off relaxing walk because all I have left are agility cubes. My battle focus is going to grab also a focus token. I'm then going to use the relaxing. Walk. Oh, this is going to start turning out pretty good. We're going to use our relaxing walk to grab another focus token. This is going to be awesome. So we're going to do a couple moves and then I'm probably going to body strike that guy. Sun's coming around the mountain, here she comes, right over here behind this guy, and she's gonna try to, oh, actually, I'm gonna stand right there so you can see her in all her glory as she takes this guy out. Spending the two focus tokens gives us the ability to body strike. Let's take him down. I got a nine, that's enough, because I get plus three, and I do plus three damage, so that's a total of six damage. He has none left. Lucanor is off the board. With a heavy heart, you dispatch the hideous creature that was once the noble Admiral Lucanor. The once again lifeless corpse exhales a tendril of darkness as it falls limp to the deck of the ship. The impact sends a shudder through the entire vessel, and all around you wooden plankings begin to snap and fall away. Dark, railsome water floods into the gaping wounds. You hastily look over the admiral's body and notice a small translucent crystal that has fallen from his cloak, a blue light dancing within it. With some trepidation, you hastily grab the crystal and flee from the ship, just in time to watch the sad remains of the suing collapse upon itself. All of its mass broken and the decks folded over and the ship makes one final voyage straight to the bottom of the sea. 
As it vanishes under the unforgiving black water, the sun seems to shine a bit brighter, and the mist finally begins to burn away. From the safety of the docks, you finally examine the crystal you retrieved, finding it warm to the touch and mesmerizingly beautiful. Clearly not the artifact you seek. <laughs> Someone must have taken the cursed artifact off the ship before you arrived. You need to find it and quickly, or else whatever caused the ruin of Lucanor will surely infect all of Umbral. You make your way back to the hanging net to seek more clues of the cursed artifact that Lucanor carried on his doomed ship. Around you, the harbor has only just begun to recover from the attack of the brine-soaked invaders. Those few who have gathered at the tavern are dirty, wounded, or even weeping. Famished, you eat a paltry meal and search the crowd for the old acquaintance that survived the night. Little by little, you piece together that a poor district near the docks has been quarantined. Word is that a plague of some kind is spreading there. Oh, gosh. Few would have dared venture into that rough and tumble neighborhood when there was no plague, but now no one will take the risk. The only souls allowed within are officers of the watch, doctors, and body collectors. Somehow you know that is where your search will take you. Our reward now is we can draw seven cards from the previous camp items deck. Each hero who participated in this mission may choose one. Here are the two items out of the seven that we pulled that we can actually use. Barrett's going to grab that hidden blade. That's going to give him a retaliate three. Kind of cool. He can hold one of those. I could grab that bow of farsight, but I just, I love the magic crossbow better because I can deal slow or burn one. So I think I'm going to keep that. They each hit on the same number of the eight and deal three damage. And with this, that will end our side quest. We are now ready to move to chapter three. I hope you guys will join us. We'll get to that in the next week or so. Thank you so much for watching. As always, we appreciate it. Let us know what you think. Tell us how many things we did wrong. I'll put comments. This was a long uh, adventure, so sorry about that. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you at the next stop.